Mary Stuart became Queen of Scotland at six days old, and at 16 years, as the wife of Francis II, Queen of France. Widowed at 18, she returned to Scotland and married Henry, Lord Darnley, by whom she had a son, James. Within two years, her husband had been assassinated and Mary forced to abdicate, following her marriage to the chief murder suspect, the Earl of Bothwell. Faced with rebellion, she fled to England, seeking asylum from her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I. Elizabeth, the daughter of Henry VIII by Anne Boleyn, was regarded by many as illegitimate, whilst Mary, a direct descendant of Henry VII by his daughter Margaret Tudor, was considered by some to have a better claim to the English throne. This, together with her professed adherence to the Catholic faith and suspected complicity in the murder of her husband, was reason enough for Elizabeth to keep Mary under close guard. Mary spent nearly 20 years as a prisoner. Here at Tutbury, we live the life of a convent. I'm so badly accommodated that I'm unable to remain here for the winter without very great hazard of my life. I'm in a walled enclosure on top of a hill, exposed to all the winds and inclemencies of heaven. This is a very old hunting lodge, built of timber and plaster, cracked in all parts the plaster adhering nowhere to the woodwork and broken in numberless places. It is distant some three fathoms from the wall and situated so low that the rampart of earth which is behind the wall is on a level with the highest point of the building so that the sun can never shine on that side nor any fresh air come to it. For which reason it is so damp that you cannot put any piece of furniture in that part without its being in four days completely covered with mould. I leave you to think how this must act upon the human body. There are two paltry holes in which to retire occasionally, with windows facing the dark surrounding wall. The garden for exercise is a turnip ground. A place to look at, fitter to keep pigs in than to bear the name of a garden. There is not a sheep pen amidst the fields, but makes a better appearance. This house, having no drains to the privies, is subject to a continual stench. And every Saturday, they are obliged to empty the one beneath my windows, from which I receive a perfume not the most agreeable. In short, it is rather a dungeon for base and abject criminals than a habitation fit for a person of my quality. If I shall behold and hear perforce, you may be sure, being a desperate person, I will use any attempts that may serve my purpose, either by myself or my friends. There are those that would secure my freedom and have plotted to carry me off and whose purposes are to transfer me by ship to my friends in other lands and keep me in some secret place undiscovered. But to adventure upon a mere uncertainty and by such means to work my own delivery, which might, if the matter miscarried, turn me to confusion, I nothing doubt that the Queen's Majesty, at the request of the Kings of Spain and France, will restore me to my former dignity hereafter. For thank God, I am not so destitute of friends. But I shall never return to France as a fugitive without a retinue, into a country where I have worn the crown matrimonial. I remember... On the voyage, as we were leaving France, a fishing boat sank before my eyes and all were drowned. When I came to England, as we approached the ghost line, a thick fog descended, and as I lighted on the shore, I stumbled and almost fell. 
some of my friends saw this as a sign that I was to claim my rightful kingdom. Others prophesied sorrow and ill fortune for me. And in truth, I have suffered injuries, calumnies, hunger, cold, heat, flying without knowing whither across the country, without once pausing to alight. And then to lie on the hard ground, having only sour milk to drink and oatmeal to eat, passing three nights like the owls. And this not the first time I have been held captive. I, that have been Queen of France, that am rightful Queen of Scotland, am heir to the throne of England, that in God's eyes am Queen of England! The Queen of Scotland beseeches the Queen of England, her good sister, to give her an answer to the three last letters which she has written to her, especially touching a final and clear determination on the treaty for her liberty. That her household establishment here be determined upon and fixed in order that, as the said queen, her good sister, has been pleased to assure her, she may take her into her own keeping and into her own house. Also, that from her alone she may receive her allowance in this country. that a second house may be granted to remove to on finishing her course of diet, or next autumn at latest, it being quite impossible, without great detriment to her health, to live in winter in the two rooms which she has here for the whole of her lodgings, which are built of wood, old, full of holes, and tumbling down on all sides, and having no sheltered place whatever to walk in or retire to. I cannot but deplore my evil fortune, seeing you have been pleased not only to refuse me your presence, causing me to be declared unworthy of it by your nobles, but also suffered me to be torn in pieces by my rebels, not allowing me to have copies of their false accusations or affording me any liberty to accuse them. Madam, of late time I have received diverse letters from you to the which I have not made answer, because I saw no matter in them that required any. But now, finding by your last letter an increase of your impatience, tending to many uncomely, passionate, and vindictive speeches, I thought to move you to consider that it is not the manner to obtain good things with evil speeches, nor benefits with injurious challenges nor to get good to yourself with doing evil to another in filling a long letter with a multitude of sharp and injurious words. Wishing you the same grace of God I wish unto myself, given at my palace of Westminster, the 1st of February, your cousin who wisheth you a better mind, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs>